Have you ever heard the verse? It's from Zechariah. It's not by might. It's not by power, but it's by my spirit. Was it just a verse of scripture that you heard? Did it sound really good? But did you not know what it means? Oh, beloved, listen. Today, you are going to understand it. Today, you are not only going to understand it, but you're going to know how to live in the light of it. you <laughs> in our last program that I was excited about teaching you this lesson. And I'm excited about teaching it because when we grasp it and understand it, understand it intellectually, have the knowledge of the truth, then we have the means of taking that truth and living according to it living according to every word that comes out of the mouth of God. We've looked at ourselves. We've said, hey, I am not what I ought to be. I've blown it. I, 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 uh, what is happening to me that I am not more mature? Well, it all comes down to understanding the truth of this lesson and living in the light of it. It comes down to if I am going to glorify God in my body, if I am going to give a correct or true estimate of him, then it has to be by his spirit which in a sense is really good news because it's saying, hey, you don't have to conjure it up. You don't have to figure out how to do it. You just need to know the truth and then walk in the light of that truth. Now, just a quick review because it's important that we get it together in, in one lesson. God created man in his image. God created man to glorify him down here on earth to show and live before the whole world as God himself would live on the face of this earth. But a serpent came into the garden lied to Adam, I mean lied to Eve, and got Eve to eat and disobey God, to eat the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God said, the day that you eat of that, you will die. She heard from the serpent, you're not going to die. You're going to be like God. You're going to know good and evil. God's holding back on you. So she listened to the serpent. She disobeyed God. She took the fruit of the tree. She ate it. She gave it to Adam. Adam ate it. And then they reproduced. And what did they reproduce? They reproduced little sinners. If you have ever parented a child, you know what that means. Because we have all sinned. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. The image of God is greatly distorted in us. And we have a natural bent to walk according to to our flesh. Just whatever we want, it's all about me. A baby, you don't give me what I want, I'm going to cry. And uh, you're not going to teach me how to uh, lie, you're going to teach me how to tell the truth. You're not going to teach me how to disobey. You're going to teach me how to obey. Why? Because I am born a liar. I am born a disobedient person. I am born a sinner. So God, seeing the state of man and loving man and wanting to save man from this condition of sin, took his son who was with him in the beginning 
and caused his son to leave heaven, to come down to earth, to be born of a virgin, to be born without sin, because it is God's seed in Mary. God puts Jesus in Mary. Mary gives birth to Jesus, and Jesus is the only begotten of the Father. He is full of grace and truth, and we, as John 1.14 says, behold his glory. Now, why does Jesus become flesh and blood? He becomes flesh and blood in order to break the power that the devil has over us. What gives the devil his power is our sin, because the wages of sin is death. Romans 6, 23. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So what I want us to do is I want us to go two places. I want us to go first of all to Hebrews chapter 1 and get another glimpse, look at another aspect of what God is teaching us here about Jesus Christ. So I want you to open your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 1. The book of Hebrews is an awesome, awesome, awesome study. And, and it's one that is so different than all the other New Testament epistles. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. God, after he spoke long ago to the fathers in the prophets in many portions and in many ways, and I quoted you one of the things that he spoke. It's not by might, it's not by power, it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. That comes from the book of Zechariah. He says, in these last days... In these last days, God has spoken to us in his son, not just through his son, but in his son, in everything that his son is, God has spoken to us. So we look at him. We not only look at the words, listen to the words that he says, but we look at the works that he does. And what he's doing is he who is a man is showing us what God intended when God made man in his image, when man was without sin. So this is what Jesus shows us. But now what I want you to see is this. In verse 3, it tells us of Hebrews chapter 1. It says, let me read verse 2 again. In these last days, God has spoken to us in his son, whom he appointed heir of all things. He get, he's going to inherit everything. Through whom also he made the world. We saw that in our last program when we looked at John chapter 1. He, Jesus, is the radiance of of his glory. In other words, what Jesus does is being down here on earth, when we look at Jesus, we see that he is the radiance of the glory of God. In other words, he simply radiates in his whole life, in everything that he does, in everything that he says, in everything that he is, he is the radiance. It's like the radiance of the sun. He is the radiance of God's glory. And it goes on to say, and uh, he upholds, and he is the exact, exact representation of God's nature. So Jesus says to Philip, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father in John 14. So he is the exact representation of the Father. Now that's what God made man to be in Genesis chapter 1, before man sinned. But sin entered into the world, and because sin entered into the world, and, Jesus, and God said to Adam and Eve, the day that you eat of the fruit of that tree, you will surely <gasps> die. You're going to die. When God said that, by one man, sin entered into the world when they ate the fruit of the tree. 
So now God's in a dilemma. God made man to be in his image and to reflect his glory. Man sinned. Now Satan is ruling over man because the wages of sin is death. And because they decided to believe the serpent instead of believe God, they move from life to death. They move from the kingdom of God to the kingdom of Satan. Satan becomes the prince of this world, the prince of the power of the air. And, and that's 1 John 5 and, and other scriptures. So he becomes the ruler of this world. And we are uh, by uh, our dead in our trespasses and sins. We are by nature children of wrath. We are sons of disobedience. So what does God do? He sends Jesus. Jesus becomes flesh and blood. Why? Go again to Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. Therefore, therefore, term a conclusion. Since the children, since human beings share in flesh and blood, in other words, since we were made flesh and blood, uh, Genesis 1, verse 26, since we share in flesh and blood, he himself, Jesus, likewise also partook of the same. So what Jesus does is Jesus leaves heaven. He is born a human being. He partakes of the same. And the word became flesh, John 1, 14, as we saw in our last program, and dwelled among us. We beheld his glory. We saw who he was as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Twice, God leans down from heaven and says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. This is my beloved son. Hear what he is saying. So Jesus becomes flesh and blood. Now, why? And I don't want you to miss this. This is key. He himself likewise also partook of the same that through death he might render powerless him who had the power of death, that is the devil. So what happens is Jesus comes, he's without sin, he's tempted in all points as you and I uh, are tempted, but he walks by the Spirit. Remember, the Spirit comes on him as he, at his baptism, and Jesus walks the way you and I are to walk. He walks under the dominion of the Spirit, under the leadership of the Spirit. And as he walks under the leadership of the Spirit, he shows us how we are to live. He dies on the cross. He has no sin. God takes Jesus and makes Jesus, who knows no sin, to be sin for us. The wages of sin is death. Jesus says, Father, I commend my, hand, my spirit into your hands, and he dies. And when he dies, he breaks the power of Satan because he pays for our sins in full. But I want to tell you something, it does not end there. That is just the beginning of where your power comes from. We'll talk about it in just a minute. God uses his word among his people. And, and so what a joy to see somebody who is not used to studying the Word of God, all of a sudden uh, just absolutely want to keep going, not want to stop. And you've gone through maybe an hour of class and say, well, we've got to go. And no, we don't have to go. Let's keep studying. The Word of God's so rich. So it's, it, it's unbelievable. And then when you see the application of God's Word into individual lives and how it turns people around, it's remarkable. It's just truly remarkable. Discover truth for yourself through the Precept Inductive Bible Study Method. Visit PreceptsForLife.com or call 1-800-763-1990. I 
fighting to understand, to know truth. I mean, not just to hear it, but to know it for yourselves, to grasp it, to, to have that knowledge of God. It's the knowledge of God that brings the fear of God, the respect of God, the trust of God. It's the knowledge of God that keeps you from going into captivity, that keeps you from being led astray. It's the knowledge of God. It's truth that sets you free. And that's what we're getting. I just love you. I just I just would like to go to that. Male or female, I'd like to go to that. Do you know what God's doing? He's bringing many sons to glory. When Jesus Christ is hanging on that cross, when he is suffering, God is doing it to bring you to glory. I want us to look at it. Go to Hebrews chapter 2, and you've got to get this verse down, okay? It's in, in its verse 10. For it was fitting for him, and this is a reference to God the Father. For it was fitting for him, for whom are all things, and through whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory, you want to mark glory there, to perfect the author of their salvation through suffering. In other words, how does God bring you to glory? He brings you to glory through the suffering of Jesus Christ, through the death of Jesus Christ. It's just like he said, Jesus partook of flesh and blood of the same as man so that he, through death, might render powerless him who had the power of death. You've got to understand this. Get it in your mind and ask God to get it into your heart, into your consciousness. Satan's power is broken in your life if you are a child of God. The minute you become a child of God, you move from darkness to light. You move from the uh, uh, kingdom of Satan to the kingdom of God. You move from death to life, eternal life. God then is in the process in that salvation of bringing you to glory getting you to live in such a way on planet earth that you glorify God. Now, how is he going to do it? It's not just through the death and burial of Jesus Christ and the resurrection of Christ, but it's what the resurrection brings. So you need to write this down. Go to John chapter 7. Jesus is performing his earthly ministry. Now, in John chapter 7, he's at the Feast of Tabernacles. And he's at, at the Feast, and at the Feast of Tabernacles, on the last day, they pour out this water, and they recite the Hillel, a psalm that talks about salvation. And it says in verse 37 of John 7, Now on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and he cried out and he said, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. This is the well of salvation. I am the water of life. And then it says, he, Jesus said, he who believes in me, as the scripture says, from his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. Remember what had the children of Israel done when they changed their glory for that which did not profit? They committed two evils. They forsook the fountain of living waters and they hewn out cisterns. Jesus is saying, hey, if you're thirsty, come to me. He that believes in me out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. Now watch. But this he spoke of the spirit. So I just imagine a white hanky in my hand being the Holy Spirit. But this he spoke of the spirit whom those who believed in him were to receive. In other words, if I believe in Jesus, if I acknowledge him as God, as the son of God, as the savior of the world, as the one who paid for my sins, as my Lord and my master, then I'm going to receive the Holy Spirit from him. But it says this, for the spirit was not yet given 
because Jesus was not yet glorified. To be glorified, he had to die. He had to be buried. He had to be raised from the dead. Remember in John 17, in verse 4, he says, I have glorified you on earth. I have finished the work that you've given me to do. Why? He's headed for Calvary. He's going to die. So the spirit can't be given because Jesus has to not only die, be buried, but he has to be resurrected and ascend into heaven so that they can see, hey, he totally conquered death. He lives. He is with God the Father. So watch what it says here. It says, for the spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. But when Jesus goes to heaven, then the spirit comes down. And this is what you see in, uh, in Acts chapter one and Acts chapter two. He says, you wait for the promise of the spirit, the promise of power for you shall receive power when the spirit has come on you. So now watch what happens. Ephesians chapter one, after Corinthians, it's general electric power company, Galatians, Ephesians. And in Ephesians chapter one, in verse 13 and 14, this is what it says. I love the way scripture fits together. This is what he says in him, in Jesus, you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel, the good news of your salvation, having also believed. Remember, Second Thessalonians says, through salvation and sanctification of the Spirit and faith in the truth, you having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise. So now when you believe, the Holy Spirit comes down on you. You are sealed. Who is given? The Holy Spirit is given as a pledge of our inheritance with a view to the redemption of God's own possession. In other words, the Holy Spirit seals you and guarantees you that <gasps> when you die, you're going to be absent from the body and you're going to be present with the Lord. The Holy Spirit is the guarantee of your redemption, but the Holy Spirit is more than that. It's go to Galatians now chapter five in Galatians chapter five. He says, if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Then he talks about the deeds of the flesh. And he talks about how the flesh and the spirit are in conflict with one another. And then he says this, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. If we live by the spirit, let us walk by the spirit. Now, hang on. If I walk by the spirit, I glorify God. And it's the spirit of God on me. It's the spirit of God in me that causes me to glorify God. First Corinthians chapter six, verse 19 and 20. What? Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? You're not your own. You're bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. How do I glorify God? And we're going to talk about this more in the next program. But how do I glorify God? I glorify God by walking in the spirit. It's the spirit within me that has the character of God. And the more the spirit controls me, the more I glorify God. Guard your glory. Walk by the spirit. Inductive study takes time. It's too easy just to say, let them fill in the blank. Well, you know, fill in the blank is not enough. If you're serious about the Bible and seeing what the Bible says and learning to apply the Bible to your own life, 
It's the only one that's going to help you do that by spending time in the Word. Then when things come into your lives that are, are just terrible, and you, and you just feel like you've been blindsided, you've got some truths to hold on to. Um, that, that certainly has been the case in my life. Having those kinds of truths so that I can say, well, I know my God. I know, I know that He is, He does good and He is good, and that affliction is for a purpose. Those are things that you learn in inductive Bible study. Discover truth for yourself through the Precept Inductive Bible Study Method. Visit PreceptsForLife.com. Isn't this exciting? Isn't it absolutely exciting? So what's my precept for life? Well, let's go back and look at Galatians chapter 5. And this time, I want you to see it for yourself. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. But I say, he says, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. In other words, yes, we live in a body of flesh. And yes, it is a warfare. It says in verse 17, the flesh sets its desire against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. In other words, the flesh is here and the flesh is crying out to you, give me, give me, give me. And the spirit inside of you is crying out, holy, holy, holy. So you're in a conflict. So what do you do? Well, you just don't put it in neutral and coast. If you're going to glorify God, he's given you the means of glorifying God, of showing people what God is like, of changing yourself into the image, in, in, uh, uh, more and more into the image of Christ. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's by the Spirit, by the Spirit. So your precept for life is just what he says in Galatians chapter 5, walk by the Spirit. Keep on walking by the Spirit. Keep on trucking, so to speak, in the Spirit. And you will not carry out the desire of your flesh. And because you do not carry out the desire of your flesh, then what you're doing, because you're under the control of the Holy Spirit, is you're showing the glory. You're manifesting the glory of God. That's what you're doing. Because you're walking in love, you're walking in joy, you're walking in peace. I mean, no matter what other people do to you, the flesh may want to slap them silly, the flesh may want to write them off, the flesh might want to lip them off, but you're going to walk in love. You're going to walk in joy. You're going to walk in peace. You're going to walk in the fruit of of the spirit, in the faithfulness, the kindness, the gentleness, the goodness, the self-control of the spirit. And if it's the spirit that's controlling you, what do we see? We see you glorifying God in your body. That is awesome. This is the way you guard his glory. This is the way you guard your glory as a child of God. You walk by the Spirit. Thank you for watching today. Join us for our next program as Kay shares more Precepts for Life.